Hello and welcome, Exiles, to the Immortal Table Destroyer Part 2. If I'm going to take down every table on the planet, I'm going to need to do it in style. So I've been reinvesting every single bit of currency I've made with this character doing void maps for Mage Bloods back into the gear. And I'm going to keep doing so until I believe I've perfected it. Until I've taken it to the point where I couldn't make it better in Path of Building. That's what I'm going to try to do. And also at the same time, hopefully drive the price of Mage Blood and Headhunter and all those expensive uniques down by just continually undercutting the current rate every time I make one. We'll see how that goes. We'll see if we can keep pushing the price down. I don't know. We'll see. But as for updates we made on this character, we now have 25,000 ES. We're now level 99. And we've optimized our tree with some, some pretty expensive upgrades. Like, for example, I got myself a one passive voices. You might think that's a lot, but if, in, when this build makes money, it makes money fast. I've actually, most of the past few days, spent about 90% of my stream crafting and about 10% making money. And I can do that because, essentially, this is the most broken currency making I can think of in the game. We would spend an hour doing four mage blood maps that would cost me 15 to 20 divines each and i would make over 600 divines or whatever it is in an hour of gameplay that is astronomically insane i have made more currency in a few hours of gameplay on this character than i have in basically every other league i've ever played over the course of the entire league it's that disgusting and we're reinvesting it and we're reinvesting it in a big way one upgrade we went for was voices so we could squeeze in the born in the shadows jewel along with a uh watcher's eye with fizz taken as as well as getting ourselves an emperor's mastery to help with the attribute scaling we are scaling it we're up to 1900 int which means our chest piece which has 10 percent less da or less damage per 190 int means we're up to 10 percent less damage taken from the chest piece implicit other improvements we've made is We've started to invest into things like a synth shield, where we're forcing in percent in, flat in, and suppress. With that on my shield, I can actually craft a suffix, which allows me to drop my res on both my boots and my sh uh, and my helmet, because I previously had a res roll on my boots and a res roll on my helmet. With this 20 res roll here, I can drop both of those rolls, which allows me to get one recharge rate on these boots, which, believe it or not, recharge rate on this trickster is actually very good. You'll notice we have a recharge rate of about 10,000. Technically, this would be closer to like 7K if it wasn't for this one recharge rate mod. And what happens is when enemies hit us with a spell, there's a 50% chance that they proc our recharge and that won't disable till we get to full ES. So it's just really kind of disgusting. On top of that, we've replaced the res roll on this helmets with a fractured fizz taken as chaos. I've actually optimized this helmet past the previous version we had. And now between this helmet's 18% fizz taken as chaos, this 10% fizz taken as chaos, and this 10% Fizz taken as Chaos, we have 38% Fizz taken as Chaos, which really helps with our Fizz mitigation. Our top end Fizz hit is much higher than it was previously. Also, we added in the Mastery for 10% less Fizz while on full Energy Shield, because a lot of times between our Recharge Rate, between our Regen and our Ghost Dance, we're on full ES most of the time. There are very few instances where we're in the middle of a very dangerous situation that our ES drops below like 90%. It doesn't really happen too much unless we get hit by a lot. You'll notice in that clip to start the uh, video here, we were doing a tormented feared. I'd had it, it was a jungle, it was a non-void map. I didn't want to risk it for the video, but on stream we'll start risking some void uh, tormented feared. One of the most scary mods to me is torment because it juices the speed at which enemies attacks and it also gives some damage multipliers which can be quite dangerous. So torment's one of the mods that scares me the most on these void maps, but I think I'm finally ready to start taking it on. Other upgrades we've made on the character have to do with more optimization in re-rolling our basically implicits on our gloves to get a ES. I've had a lot of people ask me, how do you craft these gloves? It's pretty simple. It's Essence of Delirium until you hit Trap, or Trap and Mind Damage, or Advanced Traps. They're both decent links. They're pretty comparable. Advanced Traps is a little bit more QOL. Trap and Mind Damage is technically more single target do whatever you like, both are fine, and then you annul off the extra suffix, and then once you have a free suffix and those two suffix mods, a suffix can be changed plus reforge chaos gives you about a 60% chance to hit chance to poison. We don't care whether it's level 16 chance to poison or level 20, all we care about chance to poison is the 40% chance it's giving us to poison, because the flat damage from chance to poison is kind of irrelevant when we're getting 20% of the base damage of our ES, which of course if you get 25k is about 5,000 base damage on the top end of this sword, it makes the fly damage we get from Chance to Poison just pretty much irrelevant. Now, 
Other big upgrades we made that were damage upgrades was a simplex amulet. This is basically the best in slot, and you'll see a lot of these amulets when it comes to attribute stackers. I think this is the new gold standard for attribute stackers, whether it's a strength stacker or an in stacker or a deck stacker. I believe this is the gold standard. And essentially how you craft these amulets is actually pretty straightforward and has some guaranteed consistent steps. You start out with one, a simplex amulet, you add on the influence related to the percent attribute mod you're looking for, Redeemer for Dex, Crusader for Int, Warlord for Strength. For me, I was doing Crusader. And then you Chaos Spam till you get percent intelligence. You have to annul off the, all the other mods, so it's just percent intelligence on there. Perhaps some of these can't be changed and scour. This will make it a magic item with percent intelligence, after which you just imprint it and you awaken orbit with percent attributes on a shape or amulet. You just keep doing that until you successfully annul off a prefix. So you just have percent attributes, percent int, and an open prefix. And then you just need to do a suffixes can't be changed and a reforge influence. This is roughly about a one in 11 for the 2% uh, per 15 intelligence for a Crusader amulet. It's a little bit different odds depending on if you're going for the dex mod or the strength mod, but that's pretty much the crafting process for all those attribute amulets. And that's how we made our amulet here. This gives us a bunch of damage. You'll see we have 1900 int. So this is giving us over 200% damage. We don't have a lot of percent damage on the tree. Most of our percent damage is just these nodes here, these nodes here, and we get a little bit from this. It's not a lot of percent damage, and this is really a big damage upgrade. After which, the final upgrade we made yesterday, which was a pretty big one, we got ourselves basically a perfect ring for our build. This was hell to craft. Basically, you start off with Vivid Vulture crafting until you get percent hit and flatten, and then I hit reduce mana cost, which I actually like a lot because it makes it so our malevolence is basically zero cost. And on top of that, it helps fix our mana and allow us to drop inspiration to put on Swift Assembly for a big damage upgrade. And then as for crafting this thing, it's just a hell of a lot of Delirium Essences and a lot of Enola and Exalting until you get T1 in, T1 all attributes, and the Dot Maldi. After that, it's going to be basically Vision crafting until T1 Wed, and then Hinnacora Lock crafting until T1 ES. This thing is a pain to craft, but that's what we went for. Now, you'll notice I've crafted a lot of these items quite well. I'm not done here. I, I As long as these maps are going to make a lot of money and I can keep doing the cheap ones that are really hard and keep pushing the Mage Blood price down, I am going to continue to push this character. And by continue to push, I'm going to go for a corruption on every single one of these items. You'll notice I have item sells for much more to a vendor on all of these items where I have extra implicits. And I'm going to try to put ideal corruptions on this. For example, I'm going to try to corrupt present int onto this ring here. I'm going to try to corrupt uh, maybe a 90% reservation on this item here. I'm going to try to corrupt either fizz taken as or reduce damage taken from area hits onto this thing. I'm going to take this thing as far as I can. And either I'm going to die in the process or I'm going to succeed. We'll see what happens. Either way, that's a lot of optimization on gear. As far as tree optimization, you'll notice last time we were at 87 res. We are now at 90. The way we did that is we grabbed an impossible escape for these nodes here, Prismatic Skin and Solo Steel. That allowed us to cap to 90, which as far as these maps are concerned, these dangerous enemies we're fighting, that is huge mitigation. Most of the bosses here don't have too many attacks with pen. Shaper has the balls with pen, but they just don't hit very hard when it comes to how much defensive layers we have. And then it's Xeris Flame Blast hits with some pen, but it's only 10 pen. And this node, these two nodes were heal here we grabbed. We're still like 15% less damage taken is something we picked up from doing that so essentially what i'm saying is we're taking these defenses and we're taking them to the moon we're gonna try so at least anyways this is the immortal trickster i'm taking this to the high end people have asked me can you do this on the budget and i will give you these words of advice number one is you're gonna lose a lot of defense there's no substitute for mage blood when it comes to defense number two is you're gonna have to get a little bit more res on gear but not a ton more res because essentially what i'm gonna recommend to you is a sunblast belt you will up your damage because now you'll throw you'll always throw three traps instead of one or whatever it is. And then you're gonna drop melding. You're gonna drop the max res scaling. That's okay. If you want to remake this build, you can make a pretty good version with a sunblast and basically just fairly weaker items. You'll still get to probably 15, 17,000 ES. You'll probably still do some decent damage damage and you'll still have some decent fun. You won't get to this immortal levels without mage blood. There's just no substitute for this belt. It is the best defensive item in the game, bar none but you'll still get pretty tanky, I would say, and you'll maybe have a good time. I won't recommend this build, but I will say there that's your option if you want to go for a cheaper variant of it. Now, let's get into a showcase of this beach map. I have additional proj, feared, two meter, and then some random other mods. Just a little showcase of what this character looks like defensively if I was just going to walk into a feared with some extra proj 
let's see what they can do to us in terms of how much chance they have to kill us. When we're talking about void maps, we're trying to get to the point where no matter what map mods there are, we can walk in and have some level of confidence that our character is going to be able to take on the challenge. I'm just going to look around to see if I can find the feared real quick. One of the other things, the little hidden benefits of being an Oath of Magi build, is I really love the ability to see these symbols on, you can see where rare monsters are because there's like the yellow symbol or whatever. They pop up on your thing, you kind of see what enemies there are. And essentially, if you look and you see the fear, they're actually like an orange icon. So if you're trying to play some of these void maps, it's actually a pretty nice benefit if you want to try luring enemies around and try to lure them away. You see right there, I can see the fear. They can't see me quite yet. And I can kind of lure them away if I want to. Like if Ziri sees me, I can lure her over here and take her on one by one. Essentially, when my build was weaker and, and when I was starting this character out, I would take it slow and steady. I would take enemies one by one. I would take my sweet time getting the kill. I wouldn't really risk it. But... At this point, unless I'm doing really dangerous net mods, I probably can afford to get all of them shooting at me, all of them attacking me, and just not care about it, because we have that level of defense. Now, that being said, one of the attacks that does scare me is it's Ziri's Storm Call here. I'm not too confident in myself still on that one. And on day more dangerous map mods, I will try to get away from them. You'll see they're doing a double Ziri Flame Blast. There's some things that hit pretty hard, but ultimately, we're fairly safe. If I'm taking these one-on-one, -on -one, even with some dangerous map mods, we probably can tank whoever one-on-one -on -one for the most part, I would, I would guess. That being said, there is always a scenario where you layer too many damage multipliers on top of each other, and you eventually just get one shot. The goal is to get to the point where that can't happen, but we'll see about doing that. Now, let's go ahead and finish these uh, guys off and try to uh, clean up the beard here. We are not a particularly good clear speed build, but we do a decent amount of damage. And the whole point of this build is just to be so tanky that we don't die. Now, I don't know where is Ziri. Ziri's over here. Then I guess we're missing somebody else still that we need to kill. Oh, the Cortex is on the other side. We'll just finish off at Ziri. Ziri's going to run away because Ziri likes to walk around all the time. And we'll finish off Cortex here. Cortex doesn't really move, but he doesn't really jump on you either. For the most part, if you're trying to double up on enemies... It's easier to double up on things like Shaper, Chayula, and Elder, because they will come jump on top of you. Whereas the, um, oh wait, did I really didn't kill Ziri yet? I thought Ziri was dead for sure, but I guess I didn't, I, I misplayed or something. Oh, I have the two meter radius. I, I forgot this was a two meter radius mod where you don't do damage unless you're next to the enemy. So the second I walked away from Ziri, she stopped taking damage. I forgot this map that I was showcasing had that. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like to play the Immortal Trickster. I'm going to take this as far as I can. I'm thinking about doing maybe a carry day. I might do that unless I die. We'll see. Before that, I'm still trying to optimize and perfect the gear. We'll see how far we take it. This is the Immortal Trickster, and I'll see how much farther we can take it in optimization or die trying. If you want to see us take on some void maps, I will be streaming this today uh, and uh, probably in the next couple days until... I optimize the gear, do maybe a carry day, and then I'll be back to hopefully making a new build because this has been fun, but eventually I like to get back and making more characters. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. Take care and peace out.